Hi, I'm Dan Lagani with Silver Solutions, the senior home services company, and welcome to a new episode of AgeWise. Our goal with every episode of the show is to make you a little smarter about something you'll need to know as you and your loved ones grow older. We we're fortunate earlier this fall to sit down with today's guest, Sky Bergman, the author and filmmaker, to speak with her about her new book, Lives Well Lived. You may remember that title because it's actually also a PBS documentary that Sky produced and directed and starred in a couple of years back by the same name. We spoke about both projects, including the importance of finding positive role models for aging and also why a life well lived really does include a big dose of intergenerational relationships. So if you're interested in the upside of aging, then today's discussion with Sky Bergman is right up your alley. Sit back and enjoy. Sky Bergman, thanks so much for joining us again here on AgeWise. Oh, it's a pleasure to be back. Thank you for having me, Dan. Sky, I was taking a look back and it's crazy to think about it. When we last spoke, we were right in the middle of the pandemic in the tail end of 2021. So it's a fascinating time to reconnect and to hear all about what's going on with your new project. Tell us what's happening. Wow, well, a lot's happened in a few years. So the big thing is that I finally got a book written. I had so many people after seeing my film, Lives Well Lived, um, where I interviewed 40 people that were 75 plus with a collective life experience of 3000 years and um, inspired by my grandmother, who was the very first one that I interviewed for the film. She was turning 100 when I was turning 50. And um, I had so many people that said, well, what did you learn from, from this, you know, working on this film? What were some of the lessons? What are things that we can take away in our own lives? And so I finally put pen to paper and metaphorically speaking, and um, and wrote, started writing a book and started thinking about what are the lessons that I learned? What are the things that I can share with other people? Normally with AgeWise, we're digging into things that really help prepare families and family caregivers specifically for some of the challenges that come along with aging. And yet your approach with both the documentary and, and now with the book, which kind of dives in a little more deeply on not only the stories, but as you said, the the opportunities around intergenerational conversations is positive and it looks at the positive things that happen as you grow older. Um, where did you actually get the initial inspiration for the documentary and what was it that was in that repository of information that made you realize you really had the makings of a great book with Lives Well Lived as well? Yeah, well, I think as I mentioned, my grandmother was really my inspiration for uh, making the film. I'd never made a film before. The only thing that I had done was some cooking videos of my grandmother, who was an amazing cook and never wrote a recipe down. And that was my first foray into filmmaking at all. And as I was approaching 50, which I think is a, a pretty monumental birthday, that half century mark, especially for women, I was looking for positive role models of aging and really just not finding it out there in the media. Everything that I saw were all the things that we could do to avoid aging, like using creams and staying in quotes youthful. And, you know, I wanted to own my age and be excited about aging. And here in my own family, I had this amazing role model, my grandmother, who was turning 100. And um, that was really how I think the film started with her. And I filmed her. She was working out at the gym. She didn't start working out until she was 80. So she proved to me that it is never too late to start something new, even working out at the gym. And, um, you know, I really I went with her to the gym and I filmed her. And I came back from that trip and I realized I need to find other role models out there that I can make my life like and model my life after. You spent a vast majority of your life before 50 as a photographer, as an educator at UC, I think it was San Luis Obispo. But the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the pivot for you is you went into almost accidentally <laughs> filmmaking. So how do you describe your projection, your professional sort of path today and how has that redefined your own sense of purpose? 
Well, absolutely. I, I I fell into filmmaking really because of my grandmother. And I always tell my students the more personal, the more universal the message becomes. And for me, it was something very, very personal. And I also have always had this sense of curiosity. I have a quote hanging above my desk that says, your decisions should be based on your curiosity over fear. And I really, you know, that for me has been the way that I've lived my life. So I, I follow those threads, those sen that sense of curiosity when I find something I just feel like I need to to follow that and really the filmmaking was a big part of that was just learning to follow that thread and that sense of curiosity and I think I've always loved being a storyteller so creating films just brought together all the wonderful things that I loved in my life which is music image making and storytelling and that has defined now and you know, that's defined the second or third part of my life whatever act I'm on at this point and um, but I also a big part of that will be that every film that I work on, every project that I work on will have some component that um, deals with connecting generations. So even the films that I'm working on have some aspect of that in the filmmaking, because I think that that is so vitally important to connect generations. Let's talk about the intergenerational piece. I think one of the things that is clear is there is a wisdom that comes with age, not, not a deep comment for me there, but that, that is the reality. We've just experienced more things. What do we need to do to create greater opportunities for those intergenerational relationships, that intergenerational transfer of knowledge and wisdom? Well, I think that's a good question. I think that we used to live in a society where generations live together, kind of like I was probably an anomaly in my age group that I had all these generations that I was living with. Um, but we have kind of become the society where it's we're lumped into groups of ages where you know we have senior living communities we have you know educational institutions of which i'm part of where the students are for the most part 18 to 20 something year old you know where we really isolate i think into those um groups and i think the things that we need to do are to break down some of those barriers to do things like what these amazing people in the book um that i interviewed are doing like very purposely trying to bring generations together. And, you know, I love like the symphony around music. I mean, pick think something that you are interested in and figure out ways that you can bring people from different age ages to be side by side, because in that moment where they're side by side, they're learning from each other. And I do feel like um, one of the things that happens is that because we are so segregated by age, we have all these ages stereotypes in both directions. It's not just, I mean, there's, well, I I think far more that are directed towards older adults, but there are certainly ageist beliefs about young people as well. And I think it's like any other ism or stereotype, the more that we can bring those generations together and the more that you have a friend from that other group, the harder it is to have a stereotype about that person. When you consider all of the folks that you've spoken to, and again, so the documentary came out, was it in the spring of 2021? When when did Lives uh, Well Live first come out? It, it actually first came out in theaters in 2018, and then PBS wow. picked it up in um, 2021, and now they have extended their contract for another four years. So it's obviously hit, struck a nerve because they, they keep airing it, which is wonderful. <laughs> that, that's wonderful. And I would encourage anybody that hasn't watched it, it's available. You can stream it. What, what a great really rich, really rich documentary. So um, I, I'm not surprised. And I remember asking you the question at the time that we were speaking originally with all of the material, because, you know, you had taken 40 deep interviews yeah. and had to edit it down to a little over an hour, I think, what you were going to do with the additional content. So I'm not surprised <sighs> that we're having a conversation about the book. Did you have new interview conversations or was it the opportunity to go back and really flesh out people you had already spoken to, but present them in, in a different medium? Well, I think it, I did go back and talk to a number of the people that I had interviewed in the in the book in the film for the book, and um, I think that it also was me um, taking all that information from all the wonderful people that I interviewed and synthesizing it and distilling it down to what some practical steps are that you can take in your own life that I know that I've used in my life. Um, from all the wisdom and knowledge that I gained from all those 40 people in that 3,000 years 
<laughs> of life experience. And um, so I think it was a little bit more of that. And then really that sense of curiosity about what can we do in this world to make it a better, more age integrated world? What are people doing around the world that are making these things happen? You mentioned some of the things that stood out for you that were common themes across the folks that you spoke to. Positivity was one of them. Let's get into the second one, which I think is a life lesson for everybody over time, and that's resilience. Think about of the people that you spoke to, you mentioned Lucky Louie, um, who else really embodied either in the book or in the documentary, the importance of resilience to really a successful life? Anybody come to mind? Well, I mean, there's so many people that come to mind. I think of Susie Edo Bauman, who is Japanese American and interned during World War II and lost her husband, who went to fight in the 442nd Regiment because he wanted to prove that he was American and then ended up being killed in action. And how she had to have that fortitude to go on. And, you know, she talks about it in the film about how difficult it was and um, how her father tried to help her. And, and finally, she decided she needed to live for her kids. And that kind of woke her out of that depression that she was in. And I think, um, I, you know, I also look at Emmy Cleves, who talked about being um, in, uh, she grew up in Riga, Latvia, and ended up in a concentration camp, and her mom and her escaped, and they were on a train platform, and she was handing up her, the, what little belongings they had to her mom, who was on the train, all of a sudden, the train doors closed, and the train took off. And, you know, she was a teenager at the time. And I think, oh, my goodness, what was I doing as a teenager? What these stories of resilience and how people were able to go through those really tough times, but make it um, through that and get to a place where they could they're positive individuals where they I think a big part of it is. Um, you know, I'm reminded of uh, my friend who's in the film, Evie Justison, who talked about reading Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, which if you haven't read that book, it's an amazing book. He was a Holocaust survivor who, when he was looking at the people that were in, in the camp with him, he couldn't determine who was going to survive based on their physical strength. It was really much more about their attitude and their that sense of resilience and how they were able to make it through than physical strength. And I think that what I learned from that and what Evie has taught me from that is that there are so many times in our lives where we can't control the things that are happening around us, but what we can control is our attitude about how we deal with those things. When we originally met, you were still teaching. Uh, you've since moved on from your teaching role. So when people ask you today what you do, where you once may have described yourself as a photographer and, and a teacher, how do you describe Sky Bergman today? I'm an author and a filmmaker. So that's how I would describe myself at this point. <laughs> Let's talk about where you can find the book, what formats it's available in, uh, when did it come out? So, uh, or, or uh, you know, the, the details around giving people access to it, because I yeah. know you were nice enough to share an advanced copy with me. Sure. So um, the best way to find the book is actually on Amazon. And right now it's available in paperback and as an ebook, and it will be available as an audio book. And um, if people want to learn more about my work in general, about the films that I'm working on, I have a website, which is skybergmanproductions.com. And my the spelling of my name is S-K-Y-B-E-R-G-M-A-N productions.com. And all the films that I'm working on, um, they're all there. They're there's links to them all there. Sky Bergman, author, producer, director of Lives Well Lived. Thanks so much for joining us again today on AgeWise and for giving us a, an absolutely positive outlook on the great things that come along with aging. I'm Dan Lagani. For all of us here at Silver Solutions, if you enjoyed today's conversation with Sky, you can find every back episode of AgeWise, including our original conversation from 2021 by going to silversolutions.com and clicking on the video tab. Of course, you can also go to the Apple Store and subscribe so that you get every new episode of AgeWise as it comes out. For all of us at Silver Solutions, thanks so much for joining us. Stay safe and be wise. <music>